I guess so, probably. Okay, so um, good afternoon. And as I'm going to present our position paper entitled What Are We Missing in Algorithmic Fairness? Discussing Open Challenges for Fairness Analysis and User Profiling with Graph Neural Networks. And this is a joint work together with my supervisor, Professor De Luca. So in the current digital era, era, we are overwhelmed by automated systems, including recommended system or search engines and any kind of uh, information retrieval system. And due to the impact this system is having in everyone's life, algorithmic fairness has become one key research topic in the uh, last few years. And algorithmic fairness can be defined uh, as the field for uncovering and rectifying biases in statistical and machine learning models, which comes from the unjustified differences in models' performance along social axes, such as race or gender. Uh, in the last few years, sorry. So existing works try to uncover potential roots of this unfairness. One category is the bias data, and the second one can be um, the algorithms that are receptive to the biases already present in the data set, use it for the training. In this work, we are taking a specific kind of a, a technology that is the graph neural networks that fall in this second category. So they are algorithms or they are model that as any machine learning model trained on historical data, they are prone to learn the biases in such data and reveal them in their output. And with graph neural network, we also have the let's say the problem of the graph structure that can, or can enhance these uh, bias in the output because of the topology of the graphs. Um, especially uh, not, uh, we are not focusing on every graph neural network, but for graph neural network models for user profiling. User profiling is a specific research topic that aims to infer an individual's interest, personality traits, or behavior for generated data to create a user representation that is usually called a user model, and we can have implicit user profiling or explicit user profiling depending on uh, where the data comes from. Um, in particular, in the current literature, the user profiling methods are evaluated as a classification task in which we are trying to, um, to discover this user characteristic. And here is where the problems come. Because when we are trying to analyze and assess fairness in, these, uh, in this context, in modern literature, we are facing two challenges because it is the way that the fairness assessments are commonly uh, executed now at this. The first challenge is that the fairness methods are applied in classification scenarios where both the target class and the sensitive attribute are binary. The second one is that the capability of a model to produce fair results is usually evaluated considering the absolute difference of the scores of the two sensitive attributes sensitive group considered. To explain um, these two challenges, I start with presenting the fairness medics adopted in this uh, paper. The first one is the statistical parity. And uh, here is the, the common definition. And the difference of the two sides of the equation gives us a score. And this score uh, of Equation two is usually used with the absolute value of this quantity. 
The second matrix adopted is the equal opportunity and the same. We use both the um, common definition and the score. We analyze two, con two main contributions. The first one is uh, Diane Wang presented at Wisdom 2021, where they propose and analyze the fairness of this architecture called Fair GNN. The second one is our work published last year at CIKM, where we assess the fairness of two state-of-the-art GNN models for user profiling called CAT-GCN and LHGN. Uh, what we did in this um, work, in the work I'm presenting now, is to reproduce the work, the, the same experiment of these two contributions, but on a different perspective to show why uh, we say that we have some issues and challenges in the current uh, fairness assessment. The first case study is about the absolute difference. And what we did is to use the scores, but not removing the, it is to reproduce the same uh, experiment, but removing the, the, the absolute value, sorry. Uh, and as we can see, I highlighted only the negative results. And from these uh, experiments, we can derive our first ethical implication. So considering the absolute score uh, in fairness analysis can give us some issues because from a, both a system and user perspective, we cannot clearly figure out disadvantages group. Because for example, if we consider table two, and the score for the equal opportunity. So the differences in equal opportunity, we can see that for one result, one uh, class. So if it's, if it's not clear, the negative and positive result means that uh, one group is advantaged over the others and the negative uh, means the opposite. So uh, with this result, we have small, amount of fairness, let's say, especially for the fair GNN. But in some cases, we don't know how this fairness or how these biases are directed, let's say, towards which of the two groups, if we are considering a binary uh, situation. The second experiment we conducted is about the, the challenge of the binary scenarios. And what we did here is to take our experiment uh, run in the CIM paper on LHGN model and Alibaba dataset. And we, um, we divided uh, the, the, the seven classes in two. So we banarized the, the seven classes of this sensitive group. And we uh, conducted the experiment, we compute the statistical parity for both the binary scenario and the multi-class scenario, so for the single class. In the binary scenarios, we can see easily that the group B is disadvantaged um, with respect to the, the other group. But if we go deep in, this, in the multi-class scenario, we can see that, for example, in the binary group A, there is a subgroup considerable, uh, considerably uh, disadvantaged. And in the binary group B is the opposite. So this, the binary group is disadvantaged, but there's one group very advantaged more than the other two. So these results uh, lead us to the second ethical implication. And it is essential for us to consider a multi-class analysis, a multi-class fairness analysis in uh, in this an algorithmic fairness topic, for two reasons. First, because if the system is not as as effective uh, for certain groups, uh, they will end up receiving less effective services. For example, if the group B. And. Second reason is that if we reduce the different classes, these and groups into a binary representation, 
this practice can lead to an incorrect evaluation of the fairness of models and also potentially distorting the original data conditions. So to conclude, uh, in this position paper, we pose and discuss two potential open challenges in recent, in recent studies on algorithmic fairness. We conducted two case studies on GNN-based models for user profiling. We presented our position arguing in favor of a multi-class assessment with a clear understanding of the disadvantaged groups. And we also expose some ethical implications which derive from these experimental results. In future work, we, are, we aim to explore this, the discussed aspects by proposing some solution for multi-class and multi-group scenarios. Thank you for your attention and you can find my contacts here and the paper at the QR code.